Welcome back. In the previous lecture, we set up the IPS server. Now we will configure a system to authenticate using Kerberos. We will configure two machines system one dot example dot local and system two dot example dot local. First, we verify that IPS services are running and active state. With this command, all services should be in the running state. Now we are on the client machine system one dot example dot local. First, we set up the repositories so that we can install the required packages. <coughs> there are some prerequisites to join a system with IPS server. Okay, the repository is not ready. The the first requirement is that NTP synchronization must be working and we need to install the crony D package for NTP services. Now we will install VIM editor that is missing on the minimal installation. Now we need to define the IP address or the host name of the IPS server that where we will synchronize our time for the local machines. <coughs> These are two prerequisites that NTP should be working and DNS must be pointing towards our IPS server. This NTP synchronization might take some time. It appears to be synchronized. We might need to restart the crony service again. Or we wait and verify the next step. This package is also missing. So we need to install the package that provides the host command. Okay, it's working now. It's still not synchronized, so let's restart the crony service again. Now the NTP is synchronized with the IPS server. <coughs> First, we will configure LDAP authentication, and for LDAP authentication, we require these packages the first two packages and the third package we require to obtain the files from the IPA server that are placed on the FTP all the steps that I'm performing here are nicely written on the website educatorhome.com get the certificate from the IPS server that, are, that is placed on the FTP just to show you that these I'm getting this file from the IPS server I get 
the SSH access to the FTP server to the, to the IPA server. Now we are on the IPA. And we verify that these files are placed on the FTP. CSR to P12 is placed on the IPA server that we are going to get for the local machine. Restart unless LCD service or enable first we enable the service and then we set up authentication and after that we restart the service. We use LDAP, use LDAP authentication, use TLS and give the server IP address or the host name. <coughs> we have to wait for some time. We need to change one parameter that is TLS reg set never. Enable this parameter. Restart the service. Now we can log in with the IPA user that we created in our previous lecture. LDAP authentication is ok now. Now we proceed with the Kerberos authentication and we require these two packages for Kerberos authentication. There is some typing mistake, so we need to install m underscore krb5 again. We set up authentication again. Auth config dash tui. This time we do it for use Kerberos. Do nothing on this screen and set up this screen. Real M should be in the capital letters. Example dot local. The KDC is the IPA server. Admin server is the IPA server. Now we, need, we can get or we can obtain the ticket for user asset. We have received the ticket for Kerberos testing. We logged in to the user asset, obtained the ticket again. Now we should be able to SSH the IPA server without giving any password. successfully established a Kerberos connection with the IPA server. You need to set up another machine by following the same steps that we will be requiring for our RHE preparation. Thank you for watching this lecture.